The mayor will be joining us momentarily. So at this time, I would now like to call the October 20th, 2020 Longmont City Council study session to order. At this time, motions to direct the city manager and add agenda items to future agendas. Seeing none, uh, I guess let's move on to public invited to be heard. Hi, my name is Mary Lynn, and I've lived in Longmont for going on seven years, uh, 744 Atwood. I sit on the city sustainability board where I see the city struggle to balance stated environmental goals with the funding available. For example, for funding a, um, a hardwired smart meters in lieu of the um, microwave emitting ones, which um, are more costly, as Marsha Martin has mentioned at a recent meeting. All right. My name is Scott Cunningham. My address is 3771 South Narcissus Way in uh, Denver, and I practice uh, integrative internal medicine. I'm calling to provide a contrasting opinion to Dr. Bruce Cooper's statement from 2011 that was included in your study packet stating his assessment of the then current scientific literature on potential adverse health effects of the radio frequency fields emitted by wireless smart meters such as the AMI smart meter under consideration in this study session. This is Doe Kelly of Barberry Drive in Longmont. Um, I first wish to thank you for being responsive to the voices of the citizenry by holding this wireless smart meter study session, so thank you. I have a couple of questions for you. I read in the meeting packet and also in yesterday's Longmont Leader article about this meeting that the equipment the city was going to use only puts out radio frequency, aka microwaves, in bursts and data packets approximately 15 minutes apart. Can you tell me and the public what specific type of meters you're planning to use and will they be utilizing a mesh network or a point-to-point -point system? Tune in next week. And again, thank you for your time and service. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is David Goldberg. My address is 200 East 23rd Street in Loveland. Uh, I don't live in Longmont, obviously, but I am Definitely concerned about EMFs everywhere, all over the planet. I'm Lori Stanley, and I live at 1015 Longs Peak Avenue. Thank you, Mayor Bagley and the Longmont City Council for the opportunity to speak. I would like to talk regarding accessory dwelling units or the ADU, and more specifically, the permitting process and five-foot side yard setback. I think most of you are aware of the ADU at 630 Gay Street. This particular ADU sits five feet from our back fence and directly is adjacent to five yards and kitty corner to two other properties. This ADU was built without neighbor input in the permit process. It has pushed every limit of size and height. If any city council people are not aware of the situation, please contact me and I'm happy to show you through our backyard. At this time, we'll move on to special reports and presentations which would be the update on COVID-19 by Harold. Uh, Mayor Council, um, good evening. Uh, I'm gonna present some slides that we received from Boulder County. I'll start off with this slide. If you remember when um, Rachel presented this information in terms of, you know, this is the base data in terms of what goes into the COVID dial. So on the COVID dial, we are still in safer level two. When you then go into two week testing positivity rate, uh, the, the current Boulder County rate is 3.1%, which you can see is up. And finally, the hospitalization status. I think this is the first time I've seen one in red in terms of what's going into the dial. So as we start getting in the numbers, the reason I wanted to use this is because they actually have 1019 on, on this versus what's on the, the website. And so you can obviously see, um, again, much better than we were, but you can start seeing the movement up and down. You, when you get to that number of 48, um, most of those cases were actually not, uh, were Boulder County residents, not necessarily CU students. You only see one there. And you can see the five day average of the number of new cases. So you saw the peak, we dropped um, a spike, and it's still a slight trend upward again to the point of, of what we heard from Jeff in terms of how we move forward. Um, so this is when you normalize on 100,000 population. Again, this graph still looks consistent with what we saw last year or last week. Again, um, 
still seeing a lot of cases in the 10 to 19 and 20 to 29. Um, and this was a slide that I thought was really interesting when you look at um, cases among children zero to 17 years. You know, they're looking at it on a hun per 100,000. So this isn't actual cases, but you can see the movement in the different age groups when they're normalizing. Or five day average uh, percent of tests that were positive is 3.7. On September 1st, it was 2.4. So we're seeing that go up, which is really matching what you heard the governor say. And you can see how many tests they're performing in the county versus how many are positive. Uh, finally, here's what the, the five-day rolling average on the percent positive looks like in terms of where the hospital set and the resources. Um, if you remember last time, they were, they were in a different spot, so the, the hospital resources are continuing to remain stable. I guess we'll move on to study session items uh, 6A, CIP ELE 099, Advanced Metering Infrastructure Discussion. Well, good evening, uh, Mayor Bagley, Mayor Pro Tem Rodriguez, and members of City Council. I'm Dave Hornbacher, the Executive Director for Longmont Power and Communications. During tonight's work session, Council will hear perspectives from three different speakers. So AMI is, is really, it's one of the seven integrated electric resources that will work together to help achieve the City's goal of 100% renewable by 2030. This is tonight's agenda. We will have a health discussion. We've invited Bill Hayes with Boulder County Public Health Department. It'll be followed up by a discussion on intelligent energy from Dr. Shockley. And then we will finish off the presentations with AMI State of the Industry with Rick Schmidt. Hello everyone. Great, so Bill is the Air Quality Coordinator for Boulder County Public Health, where he has worked for the past 17 years. He has a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering and a master's in environmental engineering and is a licensed professional engineer. Let's get into a discussion of uh, radio frequency engineer, um, radio frequency radiation. And so this graphic shows um, the frequency of radiation, which, as I said, you can kind of think of as the energy potential of the radiation. I really like this graphic because it shows the relative amount of radio frequency radiation that we receive from these various devices. Our next speaker is Dr. Tim Shockley. The uh, title of my presentation is Intelligent Energy, uh, Longmont's Energy Future. Um, what I'd like to talk about is getting Longmont to 100%. The goal is getting to renewable, sustainable, and resilient energy, uh, meeting the challenge of climate change. The items uh, that were identified in the your excellent Climate Action Task Force report in June um, identified on page 18 and 19 certain key uh, technologies. The, what is a home and building energy management system? It's a, it is in this case described in, in the paper as a, a key platform for distributed solar plus storage. Next uh, is a, a little laundry list here of what I consider the risks of investment in conventional AMI meters. Uh, the, I think the Climate Action Task Force did a great job. They got the goals right. Uh, uh, and, and now the technology to do it is on the horizon. Our third and final speaker for tonight is Rick Schmidt. Rick is the General Manager for Schmidt Utility Advisors. I'm asked to talk today um, a little bit about where, where is the industry at now? What is the real state of the industry? Uh, uh, just in this short 10 minute overview, there's really three common, primarily two common types of AMI technology that's being deployed in mass today. Just wanted to very quickly show the, the architecture of mesh technology. Some of this is probably reviewed to you, but meters talk to meters. Just a quick snapshot on the tower-based AMI. It's not uncommon to have 50 to 100% overlap. Everyone loves fiber optics. I, I absolutely, yeah, you can't compare it really to anything wireless from a performance standpoint. Just a little bit with home automation. Seeing nothing else at this time, I guess I'll turn it uh, the meeting over to Mayor Bagley. All right, great, thank you, thank you Mayor Protam. Thank you very much for those uh, reports and just keep us posted. Uh, 
Uh, good evening, Mayor Bagley, members of council. I'm Erin Fosdick, a principal planner with the planning division, and I'm joined by Eva Pehajewski, also a principal planner. And tonight we'd like to walk through some slides to give you an overview on accessory dwelling units. So we'll start out with a definition. We included a lot of information in your council communication, but we'll walk through some of that tonight to make sure everyone's on the same page. Um, so we included a map in your packet, and this is a, a screenshot of, of the map. You can see where accessory dwelling units have been permitted in Longmont over the past 20 years or so. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to Ava. She's gonna cover some of the code requirements as well as the development review process that ADUs go through. Mayor and Council. Uh, so what I'll do is, with this slide is I'll walk you through what our current code standards are so you get a sense of uh, you know, what the average homeowner needs to comply with. If they and so next I'll walk you through the development review process. Um, the ADU standards currently in the land development code say that ADUs will go through a site plan waiver process. So what we wanted to kind of end with is some of the things that we've heard and that we know council has heard from the community. And one of the big items that we've heard um, from a few residents is that, and I know council has gotten feedback as well, is with regard to compatibility or potentially lack of compatibility within neighborhoods. As Ava mentioned, um, the height requirements for ADUs are really related to the height of the principal structure. I think Ava did a pretty good job of walking uh, through the setback standards, and those are here for your information. One of the other issues that we've um, noted concerns with, and that I think council has also received um, comments on, relate to that ownership and residency standard that Ava talked about. And finally, the other um, thing that we'll discuss in terms of comments that we've gotten really relate to the cost of permitting an ADU and building an ADU and the development process itself. Um, this is the ADU that I mentioned uh, was recently constructed on 9th and Alta. So you can see this one here on the corner. And then there's actually an accessory dwelling unit just to the north of this. So you can see that off the alley as well. This is an example of an ADU that's attached to the main house. So you can see the main home there. Um, and then this gated area is where the accessory dwelling unit is located. Not super easy to see, but it is attached. And uh, it looks like people access it through that gate right there. And that's, that's the pictures that we have. So that concludes the presentation. We'd be happy to take questions. And the, and the motion being? That, that staff should bring back the basics of a plan, I'll amend it that far, um, uh, to see what the city could do with rental licensing. A rent All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. 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 All right, the motion uh, passes five to two with myself and Dr. Waters in the minority. We're gonna go ahead and start with 6C land development code amendments to let the council know that we would be sending this to our outside legal counsel for land use to make sure that we're being, oh, that we are considering the same legal issues that we were looking at with the SES system. That might be our solution just to move that we proceed with the ordinance and make sure that before the ordinance comes back, legal gets the opportunity to review those issues. Second. Um, yeah, I'll, yeah, that's a motion. <laughs> so, all right, there, there's a motion on the floor directing staff to proceed with, an, a, with uh, the drafting of the first ordinance with the caveat that they should run it by legal first before bringing it back. Um, it's been seconded. If there's no further discussion or debate, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right, the motion carries unanimously. All right, and then last but not least, let's go to the 2021 budget. We put this item on your agenda so that we could try to get any final direction on the budget before we present ordinances. What I would suggest at this late hour, uh, and given what we're trying to do uh, in anticipation of putting an ordinance together for next week, is that maybe you might direct the staff to take the $95,701 and add it to the council contingency for the 2021 budget so that you can give us direction uh, at a later date when you have heard oh. about all the needs. So moved. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right, the motion carries. There you go, Jim. 
Let's go on to mayor and council comments. Council member Peck. Um, this message goes out to our public safety department and I wanna thank them for uh, working tirelessly to keep Longmont safe. I think they're doing an incredible job and I believe I express the sentiments of all of council when I say that we support you. Uh, please feel free to let us know how we can better serve you as you serve our community. Thank you for everything you do. All right, the eyes have it, we are adjourned.